Hello, this is Dr. Amin Marashi, Retina Specialist in Marashi Eye Clinic in Aleppo, Syria. I am presenting the course of OCT for macular diseases. This presentation is part one of pathological changes in OCT, which I will discuss chorioretinal contour changes and changes in retinal thickening. Optical coherence tomography OCT is an ancillary test that helps physicians to study the pathological changes in macula in contrast to previous presentation where I discussed the normal findings. In this presentation, I will discuss the most common pathological changes in OCT scans addressing the changes in chorioretinal contour and changes in retinal thickenings. However, the changes in retinal structure and reflectivity will be discussed in the next presentation. Contour changes can be concave, convex, or irregular depending on the pathology. In myopia, changes in contours can vary, which I will dedicate full presentation about myopic changes. However, the most common changes are concave, which can be regular or irregular, and this OCT cross-section shows concave shapes symmetrical in both sides of the sclera, which is curved posteriorly symmetrically around the fovea. In a nutshell, whenever there are concave contour changes, myopia should be suspected. Please note the poor quality of the OCT scan due to this scan is captured by spectral domain OCT machine, which usually struggles to produce high quality OCT scans for high myopic patients due to the beam laser being between 800 and 900 nanometers. In comparison, swept source OCT produces a better quality of OCT scans in high myopic patients due to the beam laser being around 1000 nanometer. Convex contour changes are seen in several pathologies, and the most common is choroidal neoplasms or metastasis. Although myopia can show dome shaped changes, it is rare. However, in OCT cross sections presented with convex changes in the contour, choroidal neoplasm should be suspected as further investigation should be carried out to rule out a tumor. This OCT cross section shows choroidal metastasis from breast cancer, appearing as hyporeflective mass pushing the retina, changing the retinal contour in a convex shape, along with the presence of subretinal fluid which may indicate exudative activity from the metastasis. OCT is a very sensitive tool to diagnose and measure changes in retinal thickening, which can be increased or thinned. However, Increased retinal thickening can have several patterns, such as an increased retinal thickening without cystic changes nor subretinal elevation. Retinal thickening can come with intraretinal cystic changes that can have a tubular, circular, or oval, which can be hyperreflective continent or non-empty continent. Retinal elevation may appear as retinal thickening in the clinical examination or sometimes in matter of topography. Still, in reality, the retina may have normal thickening, but it is indented from the underlying subretinal fluids or pigment epithelial detachment. Increased retinal thickening can be without any signs of cystic changes and can be found in diabetic macular edema, tangential macular traction, and other macular pathologies. In cases of macular pathologies presented with macular schizes, there would be an increase in retinal thickening associated with cystic changes, which may have tubular hyperreflective spaces. At this case, of X-linked retinoschisis shows an increase of retinal thickening with tubular cystic formation and as disease progresses, those tubular cyst cystic spaces may collapse. Usually, in cases of macular edema, there would be an increase of retinal thickening and formation of cystic spaces which can be in oval, circular, hyperreflective spaces with or without changes in foveal pit contour and subretinal fluid which appears as hyperreflective pocket above the RPE layer and underlying neurosensory retina. Increased retinal thickening with hyperreflective oval or cystic spaces can be found in cases of cystoid macular edema related to diabetic macular edema secondary to retinal vein occlusion, inflammatory process and other pathologies. Increased retinal thickness with 
non-empty cystic changes commonly seen in diabetic macular edema and macular telangiectasia type 1. And this can help to distinguish diabetic macular edema from macular edema secondary to retinal vein occlusion and cystoid macular edema from inflammatory origin. This cross-section shows central diabetic macular edema with increased macular thickening, non-empty cystic spaces, and subretinal fluid with hyperreflective foci, which may be due to uh, activated microglia and inflammatory process. Uh, in case the hyperreflective foci arrange uh, in a circular fashion around the cystic spaces, it might be indicate an exudative vascular chronic process. This do not usually cast a shadow. Uh, in contrast to hard exudates, will appear as increased hyperreflective foci that may be located in the outer retinal tissue that cast shadow. Retinal elevation due to subretinal or sub RPE accumulation of fluid can give a false impression that the retina is thickened in clinical examination or in macular topography. Still, in in the meantime, the retina may not be thickened. This cross-section of central serous chorioretinopathy shows an accumulation of fluids between the neurosensory retina and the RPE with relatively normal uh, retinal thickening, elongation of photoreceptors, small pigment epithelial detachment, and thickened chorate with dilated hatters. In contrast, Pigment epithelial detachment may cause retinal indentation as a fluid or fibrovascular membrane may accumulate between Brooks membrane and RPE, causing their separation, uh, elevating the RPE layer, causing an indent of the neurosensory retina. The thinning of the retina can occur commonly due to ischemic changes, eutrogenic antitrauma. However, in ischemic changes, there would be atrophy of the inner retinal layers as shown in this vertical white field OCT cross-section of ischemic branch retinal vein occlusion showing homogeneous contour thinning in the inner retinal tissue in areas of retinal ischemia along with large hyperreflective dots which shows the occluded vessels. In contrast, the retinal contour thinning can be irregular as this cross-sectional OCT shows irregular focal eutrogenic thinning of inner retinal tissue during parsplanar vitrectomy. Thank you for listening. I hope you find this information useful in your daily clinical practice. Please stay tuned for the next presentations where I will discuss other common uh, pathological features in OCT of macular diseases.